Hey, 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 how's it going, do it yourselfers? Today, we're gonna to talk about the top five reasons why cars catch on fire and how you can avoid them. Now, why this topic, you may ask? Well, a few weeks ago, my car didn't catch on fire, but as you can see, my riding lawnmower did. Yeah, it caught on fire and it burned really quickly and it got really hot, as you can see. Now, before we go any further though, Make sure you subscribe and also hit that bell notification next to the subscribe button because unless you click on that, YouTube will not notify you of my new videos that will be coming out. Now at number one, we're gonna just get the obvious out of the way and move on, which are design flaws and car accidents uh, causing car fires. Design flaws are obviously a problem from the factory that maybe they didn't design the fuel system right, maybe they didn't protect it properly, uh, they place, place the fuel lines and other components too close to the exhaust system, they get hot over time. The components deteriorate, starting a leak, causing a car fire. And again, obviously car accidents. If an accident is bad enough, where it causes a fuel leak, or an oil leak, or even a coolant leak, those, all those three can catch on fire under the right circumstances. Obviously gas, gasoline is much easier to catch on fire and start a car fire, but oil and coolant can catch on fire as well. Now with that out of the way, let's move on to the second reason why cars catch on fire, which are Overheating engines. That's correct. You can, if you overheat an engine and you keep driving on an engine that's overheating, it can easily start a car fire. That overheating can easily destroy all the gaskets and seals that you have on your engine. For example, if the seal and this valve cover gasket starts to go, you're going to start leaking oil right on top of your exhaust manifold. That's really hot, obviously, and then that oil can catch on fire. Also worse than that, you can destroy the seals around your fuel injector and your fuel system, starting a fuel leak, and that, as we know, can easily catch on fire. But the first thing to go usually in a car that's overheating is your cooling system. Now, cooling systems are designed to withstand anywhere from 10, 11, 12 PSI up to this car, maybe 17 PSI or a bit more. Now, if you're overheating your engine, that coolant wants to expand and it's gonna create a lot more pressure than 17 PSI. And once that happens, your clamps are not gonna hold, you're gonna have coolant spewing out, getting everywhere, and that can burn and cause a fire as well. Now this obviously doesn't happen in a second. Now if you don't notice the, the temperature gauge in your dash going into the red, you're gonna notice your engine starting to smoke, and that is all the dirt and grime and grease and oil around your engine that have collected throughout the years are gonna start burning and you're gonna notice smoke coming from under the hood. Now if it gets to that point where smoking is coming from under the hood, you really don't have much time. You need to pull over, turn off the engine, and get out of the car and wait for it to cool down, call a tow truck or your mechanic. Now as far as how to avoid this, well, obviously keep an eye on your temperature gauge. Make sure you stay on top of your maintenance regarding your water pump, radiator, cooling system in general. If you notice any overheating at all, you should really get that checked out. Because even if your car doesn't catch on fire due to your engine overheating, your engine can blow a head gasket. And if that happens, you're gonna be fine physically, but your wallet will be on fire. All right, so moving on to the third cause of car fires, we're gonna go over electrical issues causing car fires. Now the obvious one is gonna be batteries, especially the batteries for the electric cars, uh, especially some of the older ones, where there has been some recalls, and obviously you've heard of them in the news. Now we're gonna put that in the factory flaws that we went over earlier. However, the regular batteries can also cause electrical fires. Now batteries rarely just explode or catch on fire. It's usually due to a problem in the charging system. Now whether you're having problems with your alternator where, for example, let's say it's overcharging your battery all the time, or other problems with your charging system, it can cause excessive hydrogen buildup from your battery. See underneath these caps? See it says shield eyes explosive gases. We're talking about you, butthead. Now, hydrogen gas doesn't explode on its own. It will need an ignition source or an igniter. And that can come from your engine, especially if you have an older car. Uh, you know, you got old spark plug wires that misfire every once in a while where it's not enough for you to notice or you barely notice it. Or maybe even you mistake it for something else. Or if you have an even older car, the rotors, the cap and rotors, the, the ignition in there can be a source for igniting these explosive gases. Now something else that can cause electrical fires are poor or poorly installed accessories or poorly done electrical repairs. See every system in your car, whether it's your headlights, your blower fan inside the cabin or your fuel pump are designed to withstand a certain amount of current. And the current supplies to those systems goes through your fuse box. 
see here how you have the amp rating for each system. You got three 10 amps here, 15 amps. So that means basically the current in that system, for whatever reason, let's say due to a short to ground, goes above that threshold, that fuse will pop which will then keep it from overheating and possibly causing an electrical fire. And that's especially important because all the wires that go from this fuse box that carry current are bunched up together, as you can see right here. Now, if one of them is overheating and starting to melt, it can start melting all the other wires and that can cause a fire. Now, as far as how you can avoid this, well, make sure you get all your electrical repairs and accessory installations done by a competent mechanic. And at the same time, make sure you never ever replace a fuse that keeps blowing with a higher amp fuse. All right, so the fourth cause of car fires at the risk of being redundant are going to be oil leaks, fuel leaks, or coolant leaks. Yeah, again, especially if these leaks are happening to anywhere near your exhaust system, whether you're leaking oil from your valve cover gasket to your exhaust manifold or fuel or coolant onto your exhaust manifold or your exhaust pipe. Those all can catch on fire. Now, generally speaking, oil or coolant leaks don't catch on fire that easily especially if it's not a substantial leak. If you only have like, you know, a little bit of oil leaking and it's going from the back of your engine, dropping on your exhaust pipe and being burned off, that usually doesn't end up causing a car fire where you have problems with your oil catching on fire is where it happens near your exhaust system or where it's substantial enough where if it starts burning at the exhaust system, it can find its way back to the source catching the whole thing on fire. So yeah, don't avoid puddles of oil under your car for too long. And it goes without saying, never ever drive or start a vehicle if you smell gas. All right, so the fifth reason how a car can catch on fire is going to be related to your catalytic converter, AKA kitty cat, or if you're saying it for the first time, your Cadillac converter. Here, I'm gonna show it to you on my truck. Your catalytic converter is part of your exhaust system and it's there to reduce emissions. See, that's your exhaust pipe coming from the exhaust manifold from the engine. If you follow it back, you get to the catalytic converter right here. So in basic terms, your catalytic converter is there to react or burn the raw fuel or partially burnt fuel that's coming from your engine and not allowing for that to go out the tailpipe into the atmosphere. However, on an engine that let's say has a misfire where unburnt fuel is just being pumped through your cylinder to your exhaust system and reacting and getting into your catalytic converter, that's gonna overwork your catalytic converter and really overheat your catalytic converter. It's not unheard of for these engines that have misfire problems for their catalytic converters to be glowing red hot. And if your catalytic converter is getting really hot, that heat is obviously not going to just stay at the catalytic converter. It's gonna move being, or be transferred through the exhaust pipes to the engine, any wires, uh, rubber hoses touching or even being near your exhaust system is gonna potentially burn and start a car fire. But also, if like me, you live in a part of the country where there's a lot of dry vegetation, you can easily, if you drive near or over it, start a brush or a car fire. And more or less, that's what happened to this riding lawnmower. I believe some of the dry grass and weeds got jammed into the, or next to the exhaust manifold down there and caught on fire. And then led to this riding lawnmower catching on fire. And it's amazing how hot car fires can burn. This entire area was the dash, completely gone. There used to be a cushion here. The gas tank used to go here. Tires are obviously gone. Pretty much anything but metal was burned off. Now, if you like this video and wanna help my channel grow, all you have to do is watch another one of my videos. You can either click and watch this one in this corner, the one below it, or any of my videos in the suggestion box, that will help as well. And if you want to help out even further, you can join me on my Patreon page. I put a link to it in the description box. You can click on it and come talk to me there. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.